In our last episode, we trekked to Namche Bazaar, which sits at 3,400 meters elevation or 11,000 feet. We took a rest day to acclimate, explore the town, and hike up to the Everest View Hotel, where we caught our first real glimpse of Mount Everest. In this episode, we say goodbye to Namche and hike to the tiny town of Debuche. On the way, we visit the Tengbuche Monastery. I stick out my hand like I'm holding it. We're Mason and Shelley, and we're just adrift. Episode 149, Tengbuche, Debuche, so many buches. How's it going everybody? Mason and Shelly here with Just Adrift and today is day four. With the memory of how tough the previous trek was, <laughs> we opt to par down our things, leaving a bag at the Hotel Hilton for when we return. The less weight the better when hiking at high altitudes. We finish breakfast and say goodbye to our friends at the hotel. G, you ready? Yes. All I'm right. Always ready. Huh? Always ready. <laughs> Y'all bought power yeah, 24 no. hour. Today we hike from Namche to Debuche. According to our GPS, it was 10 miles. However, Google Maps shows it as under six. The Three Passes trek is essentially a big loop returning to Namche, and we chose to travel counterclockwise to have a slower elevation gain. Leaving Namche, the first stretch of trail was one of my favorites. After you leave Namche, probably about 20 minutes outside of Namche, the trail really opens up and you see the entire Kumbu Valley. You get these beautiful views of the peak of Everest, of Lhotse, of Amadablam. It's a relatively flat trail. It's, it's just... You're up high, but you can see the trail ahead of you just wrapping around the mountain so you see all the trekkers ahead. It's gorgeous and we're coming up on this really cool stupa. This is a nice part of the trail. Down there. Oh. Taxi, come get us! Leaving Namche is bittersweet. Leaving behind the luxuries like hot showers and flushing western style toilets is tough, but we're so excited for what is ahead. We also know it will get progressively colder from this point out. We choose to begin taking Diamox to combat the potential effects of altitude sickness. From here on out, it's important to avoid anything that can increase our chances of feeling unwell. We abstain from alcoholic beverages and are sticking to a strictly vegetarian diet with little to no uncooked vegetables. Everything you consume above Namche has to be painstakingly carried up and they don't have refrigeration in these remote areas. We also make a choice to switch to a water purification tablet since our life straw became clogged by the mineral rich water and freezing temperatures. We're about an hour and 15 minutes out of Namche. The trail has been beautiful. It's been really nice. Probably maybe one of my favorite sections of trail. It's a gorgeous part of trail, no doubt about it. One of my favorite things about trekking here has also started to happen, which is that we've made friends, you know, in days prior and then we run into them and Along get the to chit chat and, and see how they're doing. When I was here the first time, a guy that I met in Namche and then ended up hiking with a couple times brought me here. So I can't wait for Shelly to check out what they offer here, which is yak cheese. <laughs> it is delicious. It's at the Dream Garden Lodge and Restaurant. Yeah, you couldn't get a better location. Have you ever had yak cheese before? Never. We'll Never give it had a try. It. it looks really good. Mmm, has a nice smell. It's delicious. <laughs> it's cheese. It's a little bit of a, a nutty flavor. It's really good. I agree with Shelly. It's like the aroma is a little nutty and has a little bit of nutty flavor. If I were to compare it to something, sort of a common cheese, I would probably say like an Asiago or something like that. It's really, it's a nice treat up here. And a little milk tea. The view of Amada Blam is, it's almost like directly in front of you here. And you can see, you can see it's glacier 
pretty clearly from this from this spot as well. Ama de Blam is your constant companion on this part of the trek, one of the most striking and prominent peaks I have ever seen. It's two snowy jagged peaks together, one more prominent than the other. Jeet tells us the translation. It means mother and daughter, and to imagine the mountains as a mother with her baby strapped to her back. We even met this guy, Ama de Blam's biggest fan. He got the tattoo. What do you think, power stop? Oh yeah, this is so pleasant here. The only problem, you might not want to leave. <laughs> it feels so good right now. But yeah, we're about an hour away from where we're gonna stop for lunch. So we've gotta get going. The trail goes on and is so pleasant. It's what Jeet calls Nepali flat. Nowhere near flat, but going gently up and down. We pass blooming rhododendron trees along the way and the sun feels so good on our skin. We trek through towns that overlook the valley, the river running below. You begin to go down and then the unthinkable, the path takes you all the way down to the river base. It seems you lose all of the elevation you previously gained. Here we stop for lunch. That last section of the trail was pretty steep. So it's lingering in the back of my mind that we gotta make up all that elevation that we just lost, but it was a gorgeous hike. And we're starting to see tons of rhododendrons. They're beautiful. I find every spare moment I'm trying to write and record what's happening. A lot of the narration is straight from this journal. Lunch. Yes. Oh, so this is the vegetable potato and cheese. Lunch was really good. I think we figured out our trick. One dish of potatoes or rice, yeah. something like that. One real, one real meal. One real meal and then one soup. And then we share. Yeah. So we get the best of both worlds. The hike after lunch we deemed the Kumbu Creep. So slow, we regain all of the elevation we previously lost and more. Coming around the bend to finally see Tingbuche is such a relief. The town is much smaller than I had imagined. The view Ooh. from where we are standing it's is so unbelievable. Ridiculous. I mean, it's like the mountain couldn't be any closer to you with all the snow. It's Just walls of rock and white snow. It's absolutely beautiful. My understanding is that they usually have a prayer here at 3 p.m. So we made it here at 3 for the prayer, but no one was here and a monk just walked by us while we were sitting there <laughs> waiting the for, <laughs> for the prayer. <laughs> and he let us in and we were able to sit in there by ourselves while he was just walking around doing a few chores, which was Kind of spectacular. Photography and video was not allowed inside, but we were lucky enough to be let into the main prayer room, and it is just, it's almost like walking into a rainbow. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the most elaborately, beautifully decorated room I've ever been in. The 
hike from Tengbuche to Dibuche is relatively short, but after a long day, we're ready to get there. Well, we have made it to Good Luck Hotel, and I'm so happy to be here. It's it, beautiful. It is beautiful. The Good Luck Hotel is a brand new hotel tea house here in Debuche, which is a relatively small, spread out village. Yeah, it's more spread out than most villages that we've crossed through, mm. uh, but it seems like the, the places that we've seen are they're larger. Like this is a, seems like a full hotel versus a small tea room. Yeah. Um, it's still under construction, so we're a few of the first guests. The hike today was incredible. And then to end the hike at the monastery as oh, well yeah. is just a treat. Today it's, was a cool day. It's amazing. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe.